guys and gals, lords and ladies, saints and sinners of every kind. Welcome to Rise Up Jerusalem, your Catholic podcast for teens. I am your host, Connor McLaughlin, and I realized something that I did. Actually, I didn't even realize it. So, a couple of weeks ago, I put out the video of St. Bernadette and what happened to her after her great miracles at Lourdes. And my sister was like, oh, cool, that's a really interesting topic. But, but are you sure that everybody actually knows who St. Bernadette is? And I stopped for a second and I thought, well, yeah, I, 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 I'm pretty sure most people would, I, hopefully most, I don't, th- I don't know. So this week you are getting that second part, who the heaven is, St. Bernadette Subaru, or Bernadette of Lords or whatever you want to call her. She's a saint, we're going to talk about her. And then, if you're watching this episode before you watched the Bernadette After Lords video, go watch the Bernadette After Lords video to figure out what actually happened to her after all the miracle images stuff. If you're watching this video after you watch the after, then everything's going to become fuzzling, but at least you'll be getting the knowledge of who St. Bernadette actually was. So let's dive right into this. St. Bernadette was actually born Marie Bernard Subaru. Do the French roll their R's? I'm going to assume they do. Marie, Marie, Marie Bernard Subaru. Beautiful name. On the 7th of January in 1844, she was actually the oldest of about nine children, three of which died very early on in life. She was baptized, like I said, Marie Bernard Subaru, but everyone just called her Bernadette right, after her grandmother. Her father was a miller, and her mother did laundry for the town. So they weren't extremely well off. In fact, they were so unextremely well off, they were living in what used to be a jail cell. Um, called Le Cachot, or The Dungeon. I'm butchering this French, aren't I? Like, this is really bad. If anyone is French, I apologize right now for my pronunciation. I'm an American, I don't understand it. And this little jail cell they were living in, they were actually living in for free. That's how bad off they were. France was in such poverty at this time that Bernadette was extremely sickly because her parents couldn't even provide good medical care for her. And so as a toddler, she contracted cholera, and for her entire life, she actually suffered from asthma. And this is at a time where asthma wasn't very well known. Like, they knew it was a thing, but they didn't know how to treat it. They didn't have inhalers or anything. Now, on the 11th of February, 1858, Bernadette, who is at this point a 14-year-old girl, having been sick her entire life, you know, on and on, on and off bouts of sickness, was out gathering fire with, with her sister Marie and a friend near a grotto at Massabiel. When the girls were crossing the stream, Bernadette's sister Marie thought that Bernadette maybe shouldn't cross because the water was too cold for her and she might get sick again. So she's standing on the side of the river while the girls are crossing the stream and she tries to look for a place to cross without getting herself wet because she knows she will get sick. And eventually she finds a place, sits down to take off her shoes and stockings because socks weren't a thing back then. And she hears like this really big rustling wind and she sees that nothing is moving except for a single rose in this little tiny niche in the grotto. And so she looks up at the niche, just like, that's weird, the rose is moving, and suddenly this woman appears, dazzling white, a white figure. So after we know it to be the Blessed Virgin, but St. Bernadette obviously did not know it to be the Blessed Virgin, and so she just sat there, and then she took off her shoes and socks across the river, and her sister was like, oh my gosh, how did you cross the river? It's so cold, you shouldn't have done it. She's like, what? The water was fine. It was like lukewarm. That really has no bearing on the story. I just, it's, it's cool. Sister was just like, oh yeah, no, the water is fine. There's no issue when it was really cold. So three days later on February 14th, Bernadette, her sister, and a few of their friends returned to the grotto. And Bernadette knelt down saying that she saw the lady again. One of Marie and Bernadette's friends took some holy water that she had kept from church that day and threw it in the niche and another threw a rock in the niche. And when they did that, the apparition actually disappeared. That's why they started to think there is some satanic goings-on behind this image that you're seeing, Bernadette. This is bad. This is really bad. But on the 18th of February, the next time Bernadette was in the grotto, Our Lady asked her to return to the grotto every single day for a fortnight. Now, of course, her parents weren't very happy with this, and her sisters weren't very happy with this, And the townsfolk weren't very happy with this because they're like, this is crazy. She has to be crazy. She's insane. The Blessed Virgin doesn't appear. 
to people. And she's like, I never said it was the Blessed Virgin. All I'm saying, it was a woman wearing a white veil, blue girdle, and a yellow rose on each foot. Which looks a lot like the statue of the Virgin Mary in our village church, coincidentally. But I'm never saying that it's the Blessed Virgin. Now, St. Therese kept returning to the grotto after the 18th of February. And on the 25th of February, Our Lady told Bernadette to drink of the water from the spring, wash in it, and eat the herb that grew there. Now... The grotto was basically full of mud, so there is no spring. And so Bernadette basically was being asked to eat mud as an act of penance, which she did, and everyone again thought that she was absolutely crazy. However, the next day, the grotto was completely clear water. A few days later, on the 2nd of March, Bernadette told her family, the lady said, a chapel should be built here, and a procession should be formed. And almost a month later, on the 25th of March, on the 16th time that Our Lady appeared to her, Bernadette asked the woman, What is your name? And she said, Que soy era Immaculado Concepcion. Which means, I am the Immaculate Conception. Now, Bernadette, not being an incredibly intellectual young lady, had no idea what that meant. So she went to the parish priest and said, hey, the lady said I'm the Immaculate Conception. What does that mean? The priest is probably flipping out a little bit because it's like, great, this woman is legitimately seeing Mary. From that sign, having this peasant girl who knew absolutely nothing about catechism and the Immaculate Conception having been established as a new doctrine in the church, the priest believed her and a church was built near the grotto and a procession to Our Lady was formed. Now, the question is, what happened to St. Bernadette after that? Well, if you actually want to know the answer, then, like I said in the beginning, watch my episode, Bernadette After Lords. That should fill you in on the rest of the facts on St. Bernadette. The things that I did not talk about, I believe, at the other episode is that St. Bernadette is the patron of those who are mis those who are not believed for what they say, um, the patrons of France, of lords, and of illnesses, among a few other things. So, yeah, there you go. Hopefully now, if you didn't know who St. Bernadette was and you're like, all right, Connor, time out. I don't know who St. Bernadette is. Forget her later years. I need to know her early years. Here's the early years. So, anyways, guys, thank you so much for watching. And as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, rise up and live.